Hi there and welcome to Sean Cameron Photographic. Today we are talking about a mighty battle between the Nikon D2X and the Canon 1D Mark II. These babies! Now a little bit of information for you. The Nikon T2 D2X released in 2004. It was a much needed replacement for the D1 which was released a whole six years earlier. It was a huge, huge advancement from the D1. And trust me, I've tested one. You will see that test soon. It's a, it's a fine camera, but it's a bit of a dinosaur now. It actually feels like going from DOS to Windows. If you don't know what that is, look it up, kids. The, Nik the Canon 1D Mark II N, on the other hand, replaced the 1D Mark II in 2005, a mere year after its release. So not such a radical change at all. So let's take it back to 2004, 2005, when these two titans were against each other. Tony Blair was still the UK Prime Minister. George W. Bush was starting his second term. And nobody, nobody in the whole world had heard of an iPhone. It was actually called Project Purple. To do the tests, I'll be using a top pro 70-200, lens on each of them. I'll be using shutter priority and the same settings on both. This will be a true head-to-head -head with, yet again, two old titans of the camera world. And where better to do it? One of my favourite places. It's a nature reserve and we shoot birds, which sounds awful. <laughs> we photograph birds. We photograph birds. We don't shoot them at all. You get flying birds, you get floating birds, you get diving birds. So it's a real test. So see you there. So here we are at the nature reserve. As you can see, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. And I'm taking photographs to see how the Canon deals with the water reflection and the different lights of the, the ducks and the water. Also how it deals with the shadows, of course. Now, the Canon has an 8.2 megapixel sensor compared to the Nikon's 12.4. But I think you can see it's dealing with the colours and contrast absolutely beautifully. What isn't working quite so well are the Canon's buttons and dials. I don't actually find them at all instinctive. They're actually quite awkward. I don't like having to take my eye off the viewfinder to make the adjustments. Having those crucial buttons on the same side as the hand that actually supports the camera is a real pain. So now I've got the Nikon. Both of these cameras are set to single point continuous focus. And straight away I noticed the Nikon is much slower to attain focus than the Canon. It's also a very irritating thing is that you can see the other focus points when you're using single points. It's actually quite frustrating and very, very distracting. But anybody used to using Nikon DSLRs will be very, very comfortable and familiar with the buttons. They're just in the right place. Okay, enough with the portrait shots. Now let's try some flying shots. This should be interesting, as I'm sticking to single point continuous focus. Let's see how the Nikon deals with it. Although it's pretty good light at the moment, as soon as the sun goes in and the sky gets a little cloudy or gray, the D2X screen can look really blue, and it did confuse me. It's also got a bit of a habit of telling me that the exposure is too low. If anything, it tended to talk me into overexposing. The 1D Mark II N, on the other hand, didn't miss a beat. It did exactly what it was designed to do. It captured the clarity and the 8.5 frames a second compared to the Nikon's 5 frames a second did actually make a difference. It allowed me to get the wings in just the right position. So back to the office, and let's look at those pictures in depth. 
Okay, before we get started, can I remind you that if you like this, please don't forget to like it below. And if you want to see a few more of these, please do subscribe. Okay, having got that out the way, let's have a look at the pictures. Now, the reason I started with swans was because I wanted to see how the whites were dealt with by both cameras, especially against a dark background. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. Right, straight away we can see there's no blown out whites. The shadows and the blacks are beautifully dealt with. You've got to remember these cameras were 15 years old. We would have been editing them on Windows XP and Photoshop CS2. So they may be a little noisy, but we have to forgive them for that, don't we? That was the Canon. Let's have a quick look at the Nikon. If we zoom into it, we can see that the droplets of water have been captured absolutely stunning absolutely stunning and look at the serrated beak it's captured every last little bit of it let alone the skin just above the beak just in front of the eye look at the grain in that absolutely i said again stunning it's a stunning picture it's interesting isn't it to look see how the two cameras have dealt with the beak colours. Remember these are raw pictures directly from the camera. All I've done is turn them into JPEG. There's no sharpening and there's no colour alterations. Okay, let's get on to the next pictures. A little bit of action introduced here. Let's zoom into the Canon. That little click that you can see is actually when it transfers over to the original picture. So there was nothing wrong with that, was there? That was pretty sharp. And let's have a look at the Nikon. Again, a little click as it transfers over to the original picture. Look at the colour rendition. Absolutely stunning. Can you see any noise in this second generation camera? I certainly can't. Wow, just wow. As impressive as the Canon is, I can't help feeling the Nikon just has the edge. What do you guys think? Okay, over to flying shots. This will really test them. Both cameras have a top shutter speed of one eight thousandth of a second. I'll be using nowhere near that, but it's nice to know it's there. Now the Canon has captured the gull quite nicely here. It's pretty sharp. There's a fair bit of noise in the background. But remember, as I keep saying, these are second generation cameras. And I haven't used any noise reduction at all. They are what you see. Okay. Zooming away from that, let's have a quick look at the Nikon. Now remember, I was struggling with the Nikon. And it's not that sharp, is it? I was prob having real problems with focus on it. It's not a bad shot. To be honest, I felt I'd reached the limitations of the Nikon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So now I'm back in my office. Let's see how they compare for ISO. Okay, if we look at the 1D, first of all, we can see that there is, it's clean. There's no pixels showing, there's no noise, it's, it's sharp. And if we take a quick look at the D2X, apart from the fact it's darker, which is simply because it used F4 instead of um, F2.8, which the Canon did, we can see that that is also clean and clear. Compare the two of them together under ISO 200 and yeah. Both clean, clean as a whistle, sharp, clean, clear. Okay, and now on to the 400 ISO. The only obvious thing to notice here is yet again that the Canon has exposed slightly more than the Nikon has. Or to be more precise, the Nikon has slightly underexposed. Now if we zoom in, yep, there's no banding there. It's pretty sharp. That's looking pretty good. There's no, no noise that's obvious. Let's have a look at the Nikon. Please don't take any notice that the writing isn't sharp, 
my focus point was actually on the front of the body cap. Yet again, I can see very little noise. I can see no banding. For a pair of old cameras, I think they're looking remarkably good. So that's the ISO 400. It's interesting, isn't it, how two cameras can interpret the same scene differently and give different exposures. Okay, next we have the 800 ISO. And straight in, we're looking at the Canon and waiting for it to stop. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sharp, isn't it? No noise, no banding. Absolutely spot on, the black is black. Um, I can't see any particular loss in quality there, bearing in mind that my focus point was on the body cap only. While we're waiting, can I just remind you that all these were raw files straight from the camera and then converted to JPEGs so my software can deal with them. There's been no additional manipulation and all the close-ups are from the same files but cropped. And the Nikon, the darks are darks, the black is black, there's no noise and there's no banding and the image is sharp. Okay, as the Nikon is all maxed out at 800 ISO, I thought it would be really interesting to have a look at the Canon at 1250 and 1600 ISO. Well, we're looking at the 1250 now. We're seeing a little degradation in the lines, a little softening of those lines. We've lost a little bit of the sharpness there. But it's still a very usable picture, isn't it? A quick look now at the 1600 yes now we're starting to lose a little bit here aren't we we can see that there's a certain amount of softening though to be quite honest there's no noise in the background in the darks but we have lost detail I would say that was still usable though which is it pretty incredible for a camera of this age welcome back again now for the conclusion by the way did you know that the nikon weighs a mere 1070 grams without the battery and 1274 grams with the canon on the other hand is a real lard ass it's 1220 without a battery and a massive 1535 grams width that's 261 grams heavier that is almost equivalent to another battery just thought I'd, <laughs> I'd tell you that one because it makes a difference when you lug them around okay now on to the conclusion the Canon feels relatively modern I can imagine still going out to shoot a pro shoot with it. Probably not a wedding or crafts, but anything that's not too critical. Yes, definitely a normal photo shoot. I can visualise myself doing that. If I could learn how to use it a little bit better, possibly. The Nikon still feels a little like one of those vintage cars that needs to be coaxed and encouraged it can still produce the goods in the end. What I didn't tell you when I was shooting the, the birds in the sky was I actually had to shoot in manual because it could not deal with it. I think Nikon fans still had to wait for the D3 for a truly rounded, reliable, modern camera. But it's all relative, isn't it? They must have been amazed at the time with what they had. The shutter on the D2X sounds a lot tighter than the D1, which, to be honest with you, sounds like a man slapped in the stomach with a wet fish. And I wonder if it's because they were still using the film um, shutter. But the Canon still feels and sounds stronger and handles more forcefully. Apart from those awkward buttons. Oh, Canon, what were you thinking? But just remember, this was a time, guys, when Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and the Revenge of the Sith were topping the cinemas. 
So these were state-of-the-art cats cameras. If you enjoyed this, please, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed it, at the very least, like it. It makes such a difference and it really means a lot to me. It means that I know that I'm giving you guys what you want. Okay, until next time, see you soon.